Hello, I'm Toycat and welcome back to another second channel geography video. This is Evan's favorite series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I wanted to talk about Germany actually, and in particular I wanted to talk about the states of Germany. So really what I should say is hello, ich bin Toycat and that kommen zurück einem <laughs> video auf Deutschland. Have you ever wanted to hear my intro in broken German? Well, there you go. So, yes, yeah, so then we talk about the states of Germany because I find Germany to be one of those fascinating countries that the more you dig into it, the more interesting it gets. Like, I've been, I think it's the most visited country I've been to now, and uh, even learning that Germany had states, even learning pretty much anything about Germany, because let's be honest, most of the world's, you know, the big thing they know, the widely known fact, is the, uh, you know, the war stuff and the whole, like, oh yeah, Nazi stuff and whatever. Uh, but the truth is, is, Germany goes much, much, much beyond that. They have a history much, much, much before and after that, and in today's video, I to explain some of that we're talking about the 16 states of Germany because like I said yes uh, Germany is actually divided into states it is a federal country there is 16 uh, they're not actually the quite equivalent of states because Germany has a word for states Staaten uh, they used to use in the German Empire but don't use anymore nowadays they use the term Bundesland which is the rough equivalent to like federal country but for, for today's video we'll either call them Bundeslands or call them states uh, and explain the 16 states of Germany and some of the weird facts about them so with that said let's get straight into it and Let's show you the 16 states, that's the key thing. Here are the 16 states of Germany. Well, that's easy, right? End of the video, hope you all enjoyed it. But no, seriously, uh, the 16 states of Germany, uh, first of all, you'll notice a few weird ones, the small ones off Berlin, Hamburg, Bremen, and then Saarland, all being smaller than the rest, and then the rest all being pretty similarly sized, actually. Like, compared to most federal countries and most, uh, you know, countries made up of multiple areas, there's usually not quite so much, uh, I guess, similarities in the areas, and the reasons for that are kind of vast, um, because honestly, the history of federalism in Germany uh, Germany kind of led to a lot of countries which were roughly similarly sized with like one or two dominant ones. Uh, Q Holy Roman Empire map. You always have to show this one because this is uh, the state that was roughly the predecessor to Germany was made up of ups at some point hundreds of countries. All of these things are individual countries that just make up this larger empire. It's a very confusing thing, but it does show that Germany is made up of lots and lots and lots of different things. Uh, some of the precursor story to Liechtenstein is in that, by the way. But yeah, Germany is a country that, although it's made up of states, by the way, this is the German names. Here's the English names alongside their flags because everyone loves state flags, right? Yeah, here are the states of Germany, uh, roughly equally sized, um, and reasons for that are something to do with World War II occupation. But we'll get into that later. Let's start by first of all mentioning the oddities of Germany, because it doesn't have any federal territory. A lot of countries that are federations have territory owned by the countries collectively. That's not true here. Pretty much all the territory in Germany is owned individually by each of the states. Um, there's actually a big rumor, um, this is widely believed, uh, at least in weird sections of the internet, that uh, there's a bit of Cuba that belongs to Germany, uh, Ernst Fallman Island or whatever, uh, that like, oh yeah, they gave it to East Germany, so now it belongs to Germany as a whole, or like East Germany still exists there. Uh, and the truth is, if you go to this place, uh, so okay, I've got the wrong uh, thing here, uh, there is a little island uh, just to the south of Cuba where you're like, oh yeah, this this island right here, they don't call it uh, this thing island, but it, they call this island, uh, you know, that island, and they're like, oh yeah, it's because it's quite a big island, it's 15 kilometers wide, it's like 500 meters long, I want to say, it's like a pretty big island. Um, Cuba actually gave this to East Germany as a sign of like, uh, you know, togetherness, like, look, we're together in this co co communist comrades, because East Germany was, of course, communist, and so was Cuba, and they're like, look, have this island. So, uh, you might then question, like, so how is that not German to this day? And I swear to God, I'm not shitting you with this story, this sounds like I just made this up, and this is, like, a real thing, but th I swear, this this actually happened. Uh, the island that, you know, is officially, or was given to East Germany in the ceremony, uh, when, you know, Germany reunified, and they asked the island back, um, that, oh, sorry, so you go to the island, uh, Cuba was like, we didn't really give you the island it was we just said we did jeez guys can't you can't you guys take a symbolic gesture between countries they didn't say that last bit but yeah that's really what happened uh, between cuba and east germany so even though this seems like it's true and there's a tiny bit of truth to it they did give the island to east germany east germany doesn't exist germany doesn't own some of cuba and yeah all of ter german's territory is found right here unless that does turn out to be true and cuba gets generous one day but it, it won't. So yeah, uh, Germany is made up of these states and not too much else. Uh, so there you go, easy stuff. So let's talk about the weird states now uh, because there's four weird examples. There's the three city states of Germany. Uh, city state meaning city, you know, Staaten or whatever, not meaning like, you know, city state like Singapore. Um, and then there's the Saarland, which is a just weird thing of its own. So yeah, let's start by talking about, I guess, uh, Berlin and Hamburg, the first and second biggest cities in Germany um, that are both their own city states. So Berlin uh, was is actually expanded in 1990 to include uh, obviously uh, East Berlin, the previously part of East Germany thing, whereas West Berlin used to be an ex-slave in the um, 
Again, if we look at this map right here, the occupied zones, it used to be an exclave in West Germany, in the occupied zones, because that's how Western Germany, East Germany came to be, by the way. But again, we'll get into that later. Let's just start with mentioning that Germany, you know, Berlin, uh, the city state of Berlin, uh, kind of expanded to include East Berlin, which is obviously the less well off side. Even to this day, it's still the side with the cheaper apartments, the cheaper stuff, the more hipster restaurants and stuff, because that's how that stuff happens. Uh, so fun fact about Berlin. And because of the whole division in two, that's why, um, you know, this is number one and two, but it's not by much. It's like, oh yeah, Berlin's pretty big, and then Hamburg's not too far off. Um, and they don't actually follow the normal rule of cities, uh, at least in Europe and around it, uh, where their capital is their largest city by quite a large bit. London is the largest city by far in the UK. Paris is the largest city by far in France. But in, uh, you know, Germany, it's not quite true. Berlin is the largest city. Uh, in terms of population, but not by much. So yeah, their, their largest city-state, one of their largest states uh, by population, uh, it's like, it's not that big because of the whole division in two thing. And one of my favorite facts about uh, Berlin because of this is the fact that if you are to look at, let's say, uh, the map of every European country, if you take away their, you know, capital from their average statistics, you can see how much every country suffers, like Greece without Athens, wow, 19.9% GDP per capita a dec a decrease, uh, you know, Belgium without Brussels, wow, minus 8.7, UK without London, 11.2% GDP per capita going down, because the capital is, uh, the larger city is usually that much uh, lob, and then look at Germany without Berlin, oh, everyone else gets a little bit better off, uh, statistically, if Berlin leaves. So, fun fact about Berlin, the first of the city-states. The second one, you should know about it's Hamburg it's a very famous uh, port city but I mean if you're not from Germany you know it because like ah it sounds a bit like hamburger eh which um I'm not saying you should call the people from here hamburgers but it is one of the acceptable terms for someone from Hamburg a hamburger so I'm just saying I I wish I knew from some Hamburg that I could call a hamburger I'd have fun doing that but no seriously a Hamburg is actually the richest state in uh Germany by GDP per capita uh it's like a lot higher than the others by a significant amount as high as three times the lowest uh, state in Germany because it's worth mentioning Germany is the economic and population powerhouse of the EU as well as being located in the center that's kind of nice but yeah basically um you know Hamburg is the second largest city and the second largest city state because of that and uh, the interesting thing about Hamburg being so rich is it's been destroyed so many times uh, there was the great um fire of Hamburg then like just over 100 years later there was the great fire of Ham uh, sorry yeah great flood sorry great fire then great flood of Hamburg and then obviously World War II you know some stuff went down there and they got destroyed and then they rebuilt after that and now they're still the richest place so yeah wealth that managed just to survive being destroyed several times and you know it'll probably be destroyed again and then they'll just rebuild and they'll get richer because that's how Hamburg does stuff so that's Hamburg the second uh, city state in Germany and then the third one this third city state is just the biggest oddity so first of all it's not a big city it's like the uh, ninth biggest in Germany Bremen uh, the third city state and, third, and last of all you notice how it's not actually a city state even though it's called a city state um, it's actually a city state that is made of two cities so if you look right there there's a bit of orange that's not Schleswig Holstein or it's, it's a it's a confusingly named state it's actually um, a part of Bremen so yeah as you because you know these color, this is not a good color scheme to explain that that's Bremen. Uh, but yeah, so the city-state of Bremen actually includes two cities because, you know, city-state doesn't need to mean anything. And it actually includes the city of Bremerhaven. So at least it's like a similarly named place. So yeah, Bremerhaven is significantly smaller than even Bremen. It's got about 100,000 people, again, compared to Bremen's just over half a million, like 550,000 or something like that. So, uh, basically, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, there's not many people living between these two states. It's, like, the least populated state of all of them. And, basically, you know, its reasons for existing are, like, oh, yeah, well, historic reasons. And then it has Bremerhaven because, like, oh, yeah, at one point when Bremen was significant and it was, uh, you know, I'm not saying, like, Bremen's worthless. I'm just saying in terms of other cities in uh, Germany, it's, like, one of the smaller ones. And then when they were, you know, much larger in comparison to the rest of Germany, uh, they used, they bought some land from then Hanover uh, called Bremerhaven because they wanted a better port. And they made a big port and then after uh the uh you know obviously after world war ii they get they get to keep that port and now there's a there's a city state in germany made of two cities which creates some of the weirdest electoral districts in the world because obviously for the elections of the german parliament they have to divide it into regions so bremerhaven and some of bremen are together in like elections so again like there's like a huge gap between the two it's weird stuff also and while we're talking about weird enclaves exclaves german stuff uh when uh germany was occupied uh by the you know victorious powers in world war ii uh america actually got bremen as well as well as bremerhaven so the uk area of germany had like an exclave basically germany was a little bit of a confusing thing to look at and 
and yeah, that's that. So yeah, let's talk about now we've gone through the free city states. Let's talk about the uh, the odd the oddity because when you look at some of these maps, you notice how like ah, oh, lands in a, a weird little place right there, and it's got a it's got some yellows going through there. Is that like the Chinese decided to take a a swipe at umming, uh, the Saarland? Well, no, the Saarland with its larger city being Saarbrücken, by the way. Uh, is a, a part of, uh, so basically the reason Germany and France fight so much, at least for the last 200 years at the very least, is because this land between them, you know, like they share a huge border, and the land between them is very valuable. It's very industrial and th there's lots of stuff going on in the land between them. And essentially, uh, as a punishment for losing World War II, uh, the French decided, why don't we occupy this? And uh, at the end of the war, they agreed that the French could keep it until like 1949. And then after that, they'd have to give it a referendum and their own independence. So they got their an independence, uh, sorry, they, they had an option between uh, staying as part of France, being an independent country, which is an odd one, that would have been a weird country, right? And then also they had the option to join Germany. They overwhelmingly voted to join Germany and they joined West Germany or the Federal Republic of Germany because technically speaking, I've said this fact before and it's technically wrong, but I still feel like in practice isn't. Uh, there is there is five states from uh, East Germany, which only joined the Union in 1990. And then there's 11 states from West Germany plus Berlin, which expanded in 1990. Um, basically, and uh, although technically speaking, West Germany just became became Germany and absorbed that. You know, in a way, it's kind of like a merger of two countries, but officially on the books, uh, what it was is just West Germany absorbed five new states and had Berlin expand. So there you go, fun fact. That's why Berlin got a lot bigger uh, in 1990. Might not have known that. Also, speaking of states that got bigger, uh, one of the only, the only real territorial change besides, oh yeah, East German states becoming West German states, Berlin, you know, both sides merging, is the fact that there was a merger in Baden-Württemberg. So it looks pretty big on a map in terms of its size compared to like, you know, the, the ones around it, like Saarland looks pretty small, City States looks pretty small, Hess looks pretty small. And that is because uh, Baden-Württemberg is actually a merger of three, uh, what was going to be three uh, German states. And just because uh, Germany likes to be confusing, you might think, oh, wait, let me guess. The states that combined to make Baden-Württemberg were perhaps Baden and Württemberg, or Baden and Württemberg. But the truth is, it was a merger of like... Wuttenberg Baden. There was already a state called Wuttenberg Baden. Uh, Baden, and then Wuttenberg, and then it's like a French word or something. It's a very confusing merger of free territories, which all have Baden and Wuttenberg in the name. And then to make that even more confusing, one of the big cities, not the largest one, which is Stuttgart, one of the big cities is called Baden Baden. So, <laughs> and then they have you know Baden Baden is served by Baden Airport, of course, because why wouldn't you? Um, and then also nearby, there's Bad Wild Bad. My point being is, you know, what? I'm just saying German German place names. You get tricky sometimes. You gotta, you gotta chill on that. So, uh, yeah, basically, that has been Wurtberg. You have a kind of weird state. There's also three other oddities when it comes to the states. There is Feringia. Um, uh, so there is Feringia, uh, which is right there. It's, I, it's, it's the East German state that I always get most confused by because it's so close to West Germany. Um, and then we've obviously got um, the Bavaria. Both call themselves, and then there's Saxony as well, if I'm not mistaken. They they all call themselves free states. And that's because the German states of today, again, the German states from this map, of well, this map, I mean, I, I like this map a bit more because it's it's not that colourful, but you can see the colours. Well, I like this one because it shows the flag. So we'll just keep going back and forth and confusing everyone. But yeah, so <laughs> uh, th those states, actually, all these states that exist in this map, they kind of exist because of this. Again, we'll, get, we'll explain that a little bit later. But uh, three of these states actually have deep, deep historic ties going all the way back to stuff like the Holy Roman Empire. Notice how there is the Electorate of Bavaria. Notice how there is, like, all these little things on the inside because they have historic ties to before World War II. Um, Mecklenburg's a similar one. Um, but yeah, Saxony, uh, Saxony, Bavaria, and uh, Thuringia all existed before that, and Bavaria in particular, because it's the largest of the um, of the states in Germany, is one that you're probably familiar with. So this is the Free State of Bavaria. This is the southeastern state and the largest state. It contains Munich, the third largest, largest city after. Berlin and Hamburg, so the largest city that's not in a city state, and yes, yeah, the largest, uh, you know, one by area, because a lot of people consider area to be the most important fact in a state or whatever. Again, that's like the whole debate we have a billion times on this channel, but let's just say biggest, biggest one by area includes it's it's really weirdly like bordered, so that like from Frankfurt, which is all the way over there, you can get into Bavaria very easily. Like uh, I might do that sometime, uh, but basically my point being here is yeah. <laughs> this is Bavaria, it's the largest, and it's also most of what German culture you consider today comes from here. Because whereas, um, you know, Prussia was very military focused, and so was Austria, like the big German struggle of the German state that eventually was going to form was between Prussia, which was most of the north, and Austria, which is obviously a separate country to the south now. Uh, Bavaria is just like, you know, we're going to invest in, uh, you know, the, 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 the educational pursuits, the... Uh, 
the what's the the mental pursuits the there's a word for it the you know they, they, they invest in all of those instead so it's a center of science culture all that sort of stuff and that's also where well not just Munich but Bavaria as a whole that's also where the you know stereotypes of Germany that people know from abroad such as Lederhosen and beer and the uh, the white sausage there which by the way you might hear there's a white sausage and it tastes bad but you should try it anyway don't even don't don't even I I, I <laughs> strongly do not recommend the white sausage from uh, Bavaria or Bayern as it's known in uh, Germany which is why Bayern Munich if I, I don't follow football but I still know Bayern Munich if you know if you're wondering why they called that because that's the Bayern is the name in German for uh, Bavaria except they said it wrong but, but anyway my point being is don't try the white sausage if you ever go there and you probably will go there because if you go to Germany there's two big airports one in Bavaria in Munich and one in Frankfurt because Frankfurt oddly enough is like the hub of West Germany even though it's the fifth largest city because Cologne is the fourth speaking uh, well we're in larger cities anyway because actually no I, I said I said I'd speak about the free uh, you know the free state thing which again Saxony as well as Fringia which you'll see there and the reasons uh, you know for the kind of state thing is because when uh, f fun fact this is a really little known fact of history but there was a uh, there was a bad thing that Germany did in uh, the 1930s through to the 1945. Again, this is a, a very history fact, so you know stay up for this this vague knowledge right here. Um, that basically, uh, yeah, they they did a bad thing, and the rest of Europe was like, you know, that's bad, stop that, and they said no. So they went in and invaded. Well, I mean. Germany did a lot of invading first, but so the rest of Europe came in and was like, you know what, we're going to stop that. So they came in and they occupied Germany, except because it was four separate powers in the Allies, uh, the United States, France, uh, the UK and the Soviet Union, of course, they all divided up Germany between them. And they were the goal was to create a unified country. Obviously, the Soviet Union was like, but it should be communist and it should pay us all the money and help out our country. Whereas the other three countries kind of wanted a Germany that... Again, they, they wanted to rebuild Germany as the power it was and just make it not evil or whatever. <laughs> Whereas the Soviet Union was like, no, they are evil, they will pay. And um, I'm really, really vaguely something like that. But that's that's why you get the four regions of Germany and uh, also why Berlin is divided in four because they all decided to just take a little bit and then they were going to work on reunifying it. But instead, we got two countries, East Germany, which is made up of these five states, and then these uh, all three zones eventually reunified into the Federal Republic of Germany. So that's why the states were all roughly similarly sized and like all have borders which go roughly along quarters because the states had to form from these things and also by the way why baden württemberg again formed from three separate states it formed across those lines because it was the one state where it didn't make too much sense so there you go fun fact uh the the three uh, zones here merged to make frg and that's why there was 10 states six states over there i've gone over this enough but i really want to clarify that's why the borders are kind of where they are because they just agreed rough lines which made some cultural sense but not necessarily perfect sense and that's why the current states in germany I kind of artificially made, but they're happy too. Like they, they work out for everyone. Uh, they have mergers and they, they agree they should have some changes, but they can't agree on how. And that's how the states are gonna change. So next up, we spoke about the largest state in terms of area, but I think the way more important state when it comes to large things is the area of the largest population. So about one quarter of Germany's population lives in just this area right here. This is North Rhine Westphalia. Like, wait, I'll show you on a map one more time, as you can see. North Rhine, Westphalia, their map, their, their flag emblem thing looks like that. I kind of like it. I dig it. And uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the most productive areas in all of Europe, all of the world, arguably. Um, and it's the one of the largest metropolitan areas in all of Europe because this is an area with the fourth largest city in Germany, Cologne. Frankfurt's the fifth, in case you want to keep going down the list. Uh, <laughs> but the fourth largest city in Germany, Cologne, is founded here. And even though they've only got the fourth largest city, they then have like the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, the 18th, the 19th. They've got like nine of the top 20 biggest cities all over here. And it's not just that they have nine big cities. Like, you know, having nine big cities would be nice. And it's not just that they have lots of close by settlements. You know, everywhere in the world, if you look at a map, like let's pick just a random country, Belarus. If you look really close at Belarus, you can see how like, oh, look at all these like towns that are close by. Like that's a thing. But the truth is Germany has huge, or North Rhine, Westphalia has huge cities next to each other. Like huge, 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 huge. And um, like, so this this cradle right here, if you, so this is where maps can actually tell quite a big story because this map right here obviously is made for navigation. So it has roads, rail routes, etc. Look at the road routes connecting Cologne into Dusseldorf, into Duisburg, into Essen. Essen, by the way, just means eating in Germany. They named a city eating, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, then we got Dortmund, uh, all of these cities, and then even Munster up there, and there's lots of other big cities that aren't quite in the same connection, but all of these cities are connected to each other so many, with so many autobahns, again, 
no speed limit motorways. Um, they're connected by just one S-Bahn network. Like, the, the train networks between them is absurd. That they're, they're, they're functionally one city, because, you know, S-Bahn, Stadtbahn, Citybahn, they've got one city set of trains, which, you know, they all go off from different routes each way, but still, they're all connected directly together, um, with even Wuppertal in there, which, by the way, has those weird aerial, like, it's like a monorail, but they fly from underneath. I, I kind of want to, like, show you that, because, the, you know, let's, let's try our hardest. I feel like I have to show you, like, one of the weird things about this. Because, you know what, fun facts about the world? Everyone's seen the, I think it was the Tom Scott video, right? The, look, it's it's the flying flying magic things. Isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, they have a public transport network where you go in the sky. They're like sky buses. Uh, you can see one in the tiniest resolution in the background there. Maybe if I go, like, wait, let's, let's zoom out. If we go this way a bit, will it get closer or further away? So if we go all the way over here. Eventually it will catch up, I swear. Okay, so no, it's... <laughs> whatever, my point being, they have they have magic flying machines for their public transport, and that's on top of the fact that it's massively waterbound linked, and that's because this is the most populous uh, German state. So, there you go. I think I've gone through now, like, six individual states, plus the free states of Thuringia, plus the free state of that. Uh, Berlin exists inside, with enough, like, because, again, looking at the map, exists entirely inside Brandenburg, and Berlin, Brandenburg... Uh, well, one, that's the name of their airport, but two, there's, like, some half-hearted, like, merger suggestions and such. Uh, my point being with all of this video is that the states of Germany are all kind of their own little thing. If you go to, um, one sec, let me, let me, let, let me type it in right here and show you, so Saxony right here. So, if you go to Saxony, there is, you know, some, you can see the, the links into, uh, Czechia. In, in the state above it, which name escapes me until just now, uh, in, in this kind of area right here, there is, there's a language, it's called Sorbian. Uh, which is spoken in Germany, which is just a Slavic language. Like, uh, we don't even know how it got... Well, we do know. But <laughs> it's just like a weird, weird little thing. It gets a little bit Slavic when you go to the East and also, you know, has the communist uh, reputations too. When you go to Schleswig Holstein, used to be part of Denmark, so it's got a lot of Danish connotations. Um, if you go to Bavaria, really, the thing about Bavaria, you got to bear in mind, is like, Bavaria is basically Austria. Like, and that's kind of offense. Like, Bavarians and Austrians understand each other way better than, you know, Germans understand Bavarians. <laughs> and, <laughs> fun fact, by the way, because um, the, like, the, the amount of variance in how they even speak German is so wide across Germany, uh, like, uh, which, by the way, I learned this from a person, I haven't fact-checked this one, but let's believe it's true at the very least, but the center of language in Germany is in Hanover, that's the most neutral German accent there is, and that's why a lot of these stories from the Brothers Grimm, if I'm not mistaken, come from Hanover. So, there you go, and that's why it's such, uh, yeah, I don't know, fun, fun fact about Germany. Uh, they've got lots of crazy accents, and it's not even just an accent, by the way. They literally speak a different language. They call, um, I learned this one, the, the word for potato in German is Kartoffel, or something like that, and in, uh, in, 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 which just means potato, but in, um, over in Bavaria, they call it an earth apple, for some reason. <laughs> There's lots of weirdities like that, where it's just, you know what, Bavaria likes to call things different things. They have different words. They speak different. They've got a really thick, like, and uh, yeah, that's 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 Germany explained. It's made up of lots of states, which are all kind of you know influenced by the countries around them. There's the again, there's the Saarbrücken, which used to belong to the French. Um, you know, there's Bavaria, which is very Austrian centric, and then there's the Danish parts, and then there's you get a bit more Dutch over here, get a bit more like you know Eastern European slash. Uh, you, you get the weird Slavic things, the Sorbian parts. You get the, the communist, uh, you know, kind of history there. And it's kind of fascinating the diversity you get in a country that's not even one of the biggest in the EU. It's the biggest by population uh, in the whole of Europe, excluding the parts that aren't in, entirely in Europe. Biggest country by population. But it's only, like, the eighth biggest country by area. Like, France is bigger, Spain is bigger, Sweden's bigger, Norway's bigger. Finland is almost just as big. It's, it's not quite. But my point being... Uh, a country that is technically so small, is so big, and so vast, and uh, contains people that call it an Earth Apple. Why would you even do that? So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, there's one more thing I want to go for before we go. Because uh, I feel like I've gone over most of the states, explained most of them. I mean, like, I could talk about each individual one behind that, but... By the way, there's, there's three states of Saxony in the name. I should have mentioned that. That's because the Saxons were a huge tribe. Huge tribe, which eventually made England, which is where I'm from. So now it all links in together. Uh, in case you're curious as to why I went to Germany so much, by the way, I should mention uh, my jo uh, my, I have a, 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 a I have a girlfriend that lives in Germany, and also Gamescom is in Cologne every year, and also there are cheap flights to like Berlin sometimes, and I think to Hamburg, but I've not been there. 
and then to Munich because I had to go see the, the beer and the white sausage, which I do not recommend. So one more thing before I go now, I can mention, is um, I wanted to talk about a, so this isn't sponsored at all, like, uh, I'd, I'd like to do sponsored videos. I think, you know, to support like irregular content, you kind of need to do something like that. But one of the solutions I think might be out there in terms of like, how do you support content besides just potentially watching an ad. Because ad supported is great for like daily content or for more than daily or for content that you can watch a whole bunch of. But for one-off videos like this, what's the best way to support it? And although everyone's gonna say Patreon, I, I for, if, if I can avoid it, you know, Patreon is something I'd like to. Again, like it's one of those things that's like, when I need to, I'd like to. I don't wanna just be one of those channels that's like, well, I mean, I could do it, so I will. So. Yeah, Patreon, let's, let's not talk about that. But instead, one of the things that I like as a solution to not just like, oh yeah, well this is a good way to support channel, uh, you know, one channel you like, because that's what Patreon is, support one channel. Instead, what if you could, you know, like have a subscription to a bunch of channels, you know, like what if you could have that $10 donation and it goes everywhere. And that's what YouTube Red is, but only half the money goes to the YouTubers. But if you don't have YouTube Red, get YouTube Red. It supports every YouTuber you watch, not just me. In fact, majority, not me. Like I'll make like, five cents or something off your YouTube, if that, if you watch most of my videos. But uh, what I could recommend instead is Flatter. So Flatter, it's like, I've seen it a bunch of Reddit and stuff, um, but it's a really cool idea for a website where you pay a subscription, you download a browser extension, and then it shares that subscription amongst everything you watch, uh, amongst anyone that like wants to claim it at least, which is a really cool idea because they also, to incentivize people to get into it, because it's like, it's, I think it's fearless or it's near fearless. Uh, basically, uh, they will give an extra $10. If you just subscribe $10 for three months, they'll give an extra $10 to the person who referred you, which in this case is me. So here's just an idea. We're gonna give it a try. Maybe it goes nowhere. But if you go to flatter.com slash at ibxtoycat, I'll link it down below. Um, then you can, you know, do that, support all the other stuff you want on the internet. Again, I, 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 you, I, I like if you want to support me, but if you just want to support other stuff, that's cool too. Uh, but then also, um, then I, I believe then they'll add on $10 on top of that, and that would be cool. So that's something I feel like you should try. If you want to support the content on the internet, but you don't really like the whole, like, oh, I'll donate to everyone's individual, you know, fund every month, or like, oh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just subscribe to 50 Patreons, and then that's all the money gone. Uh, instead, Flatter allows you to have one subscription across the internet, and maybe that's a cool idea that you want to do. So check out flatter.com slash at link down below. Uh, not sponsored at all. Again, no, no dealership, whatever. I just figured it should be an interesting experiment. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Second channel, I care like enough to, to do an advertisement for Flatter apparently. Or well, like, again, it's not even an advertisement, just like, you know, a thing you should care about, because this is the page. It's got a little cat face on it. So bye.